0825 now on 2 C Canberra Live until 6 o'clock. You can call in if you'd like on 6255-1206 to talk about whatever it is you'd like to talk about. But right now, we're going to talk about money, which is everybody's very favourite topic. And it's a Friday afternoon, so it's time to welcome along from Envision Financial, Luke Smith. Good afternoon. How are we? We good? I think we are. Look, we've had, uh, we've got football on television. We've got fake crowd noises on the broadcast for the football. I don't know if you saw any of that, but no. there's, there's crowd noises. And there's there? no crowd. Right, so no more. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's exciting. I hope Elliot and the boys can get up on the weekend. and um, it's, uh, it's Melbourne in Melbourne, isn't it? That is correct, yes. No, I'm, yes. Sure Elliot, I'm sure Elliot and the lads will get the job done just for a little bit of COVID relief. Well, absolutely. I'll tell you what, it's um, it's no foregone conclusion because the storm obviously are mm, tough to good speak. Side. Yeah, good side. Uh, but, uh, but the Raiders have done it before and we are hoping they will do it again. Mm. Today we're going to talk about something which is absolutely gobbledygook as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. So you're on your own on this one. I can't even ask intelligent questions because I do not have a clue. But apparently what we're talking about is whether or not a 10% contribution to a PSS is a good idea. Mm. What the heck is a PSS? So let's just take a step back. So we've got two types of funds. You've got a standard accumulation fund, which most people have, where you put your money in the super, it's invested in something, um, and you have a defined benefit scheme. So today's show is really about talking about one of the government funds, which is obviously the PSS. And the underlying premise of that fund is that your entitlements are worked out using a range of calculations. And today we're going to talk about some of the key things that affect those calculations and how people can make the most of their membership. Because to be honest, I'm tired of people coming into the office and spending 25 or 30 years in this fund and not making a 10% contribution where possible. And when they are told the implications of what they didn't know, um, you can see tears well up in their eyes. Oh, well, that's not good. So a PSS, would that be, oh, let me take a stab in the dark here, public service superannuation? Yeah, it is PSS. So you've got CSS and PSS. Mm -hmm. Obviously, CSS was the older fund, and they closed that, and they opened the PSS, and it's effectively a lump sum fund with a pension option. Okay, okay. so during your years of membership, you can make a contribution, that's what we're going to talk about now. And when you go to retire, the calculation for your membership is your final average salary multiplied by your accrued benefit multiple. And that is merely just a calculation that represents your rate of contribution. And you know, to, to look at this example here, we say a 10% contribution after 10 years of service gives you an accrued benefit multiple of 0.31. A 5% contribution gives you an accrued benefit multiple of 0.21. So as you can see, if the final calculation to work out what you can then access at retirement is final average salary of the last three years multiplied by your accrued benefit multiple, obviously the higher you can get that multiple, the more money you get. The more money you get. And then the second kicker about this fund is obviously then how you convert it to an income stream. Now, people come in regularly and they say, oh, I'm in the PSS. And I say to them, do you know why it's good? And the general answer I get is, no, but some old bloke told me to stay in it because it's great. <laughs> and they don't actually understand the, the fundamentals or the, the, the factors that, that give you a return. So what I wanted to touch on today is obviously, I think it's very advantageous for people to make a contribution of 10% because it's worked out on your gross income, but it's taken on an after tax basis. Now people might say, well, that's not very good because I'm not getting a tax deduction. What people need to keep in mind is that their contributions over their serving period are then given back to them as a tax-free portion of any future pension payment. Yeah. So whilst you don't get a tax deduction like you would through salary sacrifice, you are getting a good outcome because when you draw an income stream, all of the money you put in as a, a tax-free payment, because it went in after tax, comes back to you as a tax-free payment, so then you're not double counting. But some of the other reasons that it's obviously advantageous to maximise it is, if you've been in the public service for more than 10 years, the government will match your contribution. That's advantageous. Um, the other thing that people need to keep in mind is when they go to take their benefit, some of the options available to them are a full pension, a part pension, where you convert 50% or more of your benefit to an income stream, right. or a lump sum. Okay. Now, the second real kicker of this fund is the pension conversion factor. And all that means in English is, what number do we use to work out what your lump sum will give you as a pension. Now, 
in light of COVID and a lot of market volatility, if you turned around at the moment and said a yield of around 3% from your assets in relation to income would be good, to give you an idea, the pension conversion factor at age 55 for this fund is 12. So whatever your lump sum is, divided by 12, gives you the pension you'll receive for the rest of your natural life. And if you live more than 12 years, then that's a bonus. Well, <laughs> that is a bonus, but it's also passed then to a spouse at 67% of that rate for the rest of their life. Even better. Even better. So thinking about maximising your pension is very important. Um, and what I've got here is, a, is an example to illustrate to people, whilst they may not think it's a big difference, let's look at the value of these factors and try and make sure that people can maximise their returns leading into retirement. So if we start with some, some, some common factors, let's say we've got a final average salary of 120,000. You've got an accrued benefit multiple, which is some existing years of service. Let's say your factor's three. And you've got 15 years between 40 and 55 before you pull stubs. Okay? So looking at the numbers, if you take the 3% or the, the accrued benefit multiple of three, and then you add on 15 years at 0.31, mm -hmm. you end up with an accrued benefit multiple of 7.65. If you only made a 5% contribution, that falls to 6.15. Now you might say, well, that's not a lot in relation to the numbers. But if you apply that to a final average salary of $120,000, that's a pretty significant change because it goes from $918,000 of money to $738,000 of money. And the only difference here is $6,000 a year of contributions. So you put $6,000 extra in a year over 15 years, that's $90,000 of contributions. But the value in your lump sum is $180,000. That for me sounds like money for free. Yes, doubled your money for nothing. Effectively. Yeah, um, I, I know there's a lot of numbers here <laughs> and they're pretty confusing, but all I know so far is the big numbers are good. The big smaller numbers, numbers, not as good. Big numbers are good. And obviously the rules and the person that wrote this fund um, was very, very advantageous for him and the rest of his public service mates. Mm. Um, so if we extend that example a little bit further, if we have $918,000 of benefit and someone retires with a factor of 12, that could make them entitled to a pension of, of $76,500 for the rest of their life, index twice a year. Every year. Yep. If we take the lower number and said we only made a 5% contribution, that pension falls to $61,500 indexed twice a year for the rest of your life. So that's a $15,000 difference. Yep. Every year you've retired. And 300 all, bucks a week. And all you've given up is six grand a year between a 10% contribution and a 5% contribution on a salary of 120 grand. So this is where you start to think, how could I fund that, be it an offset account, be it a change in lifestyle, be it I make a contribution to the PSS and maybe my husband or my wife doesn't salary sacrifice? These are all of the funding mechanisms that people need to think about. But I think that speaks volumes to the value of the way the fund has been written and its rules. Yeah. Because if you can give $6,000 extra for 15 years and end up investing $90,000 after tax in the fund, to get $180,000 of difference in your lump sum. That's like playing pokies with a guaranteed 100% return, isn't it? It sounds very much like it, doesn't it? It's not bad. <laughs> it, not bad at all. Now, um, obviously, some of these formulations are complicated and the mm. numbers sound very confusing. Uh, but essentially, the bottom line is if you can make a contribution, it's going to give you a much better result. Yeah. And if you can make the, uh, the bigger contribution is going to give you the best result. Yeah, and the thing people need to keep in mind as well is, you, know, you could be out there saying, well, I can't make a 10% contribution. Well, you might be able to do eight. You might be able to do seven. You might be able to do nine. Whatever you can afford to do as a member of this fund and get that money into the fund over your, your, your numerous years of service yeah. is guaranteeing you the potential to have the highest possible benefit and the most outlandishly good pension conversion factor because at 55 if you if you divide whatever your number is by 12 yes that's what you get as a full pension now exactly. let's put that into context 
That $15,000 difference between a $76,000 pension and a $61,000 pension, you'd need $500,000 invested, generating you 3% yes. to cover that difference. Exactly. But so there's no way you're going to be able to save $500,000 to get that if you weren't in the fund. So it stands to reason that as much money as you can afford to get into this fund, okay. you need to do on an ongoing basis. Now, would I be right in assuming that the reason we're talking about a 10% contribution is because uh, you're not allowed to contribute any more than that? Spot on. That's the maximum that can go into the fund under the rules of the fund. Okay. That's exactly Otherwise, right. Otherwise, you'd be putting in as much as you possibly could. Correct. And, and I guess and, and ex and if we extrapolate out on this strategy, if you are putting in that amount of money and you still have some surplus income, then you can obviously salary sacrifice to another fund right. up to the $25,000 concessional cap limit that we've spoken about in other shows. So this is where these strategies start to interlock and then you need to look at your broader situation to make sure that you're making the most of your cash flow and your ability to save. But my first port of call in 99.5% of instances is get that 10% contribution up over your years of service because that pension conversion factor of 12 at age 55 is so outlandishly good, you would be crazy not to take full advantage of it. Yes, and that is actually another benefit that I was just thinking about. 55 is not particularly old no. to be taking your pension. No. And uh, if your factor is 12 and you're mm. anticipating living for another 30 years, mm. that's another bargain, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, this, is, this is the sale of the century. And, you know, you, you know something's too good when the government shuts it. <laughs> you know, everybody knows that. That's not, that's not, I'm not putting a flag anywhere new there. Yeah. But again, I think people struggle in some instances to understand the real value of the contribution. They may look at, well, I can't afford it at the moment and I'd rather have four investment properties. And that's great. I would say for the rate of return you will get from this fund, I'd think about maybe dialing some of that back and directing this as your first port of call in relation to saving. Um, and it's not sexy and you're not going to talk about it at a barbecues. Hey, I'm putting 10% into the PSS. Um, but over your working life of 20, 30, whatever years you do, yeah. um, the, the limited risk associated with this fund and the way that the calculation is worked it's 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 a lay down reserve. Well, the way you put it, you know, the bang for the buck is just unmatched oh, anyway. It's phenomenal. It is, you know, as I say, to look at that there and say that fifteen thousand dollar difference in that example, you'd need five hundred thousand dollars of invested funds at three percent. That's it's crazy. In fact, the only deal that would be even better would be the one that the politicians give themselves. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You hit the nail on the head. It's about uh, twelve minutes to five on two double C Canberra Live until six o'clock. And in this half hour, I'm joined by Luke Smith from Envision Financial. And today we're talking about uh, making that 10% contribution to the PSS if you are fortunate enough to be in that uh, scheme. Uh, and the 10%, of course, is the maximum that you can put in. If you can't afford the 10%, well, just put in as much as you can. But it seems like the return you get in the end is much, much better than you'd get anywhere else. We'll come back with more in just a few minutes. We'll see Canberra live until six o'clock and in the studio with me until five, we've got Luke Smith from Envision Financial. We're talking about making the 10% contributions to the PSS and why it's a good idea. But there you go, living proof. This is the correct strategy, 10% extra, because that's the maximum you can put in. Put in the 10%, you will benefit from it in the long run. That's the deal. And uh, we were just discussing during the break, of course, uh, this is such a great deal. I want in. Can I get into this? No. Why not? Because <laughs> anything that's too good to be true gets shut. <laughs> and which is exactly what's happened. Obviously, they shut this fund many years ago, so you know people that are in there are in there, but there's obviously no new membership. Um, and obviously, you know, back in the day, this was one of the big draws of having people come and work for the government yes. and be an employee, which obviously has worked very, very well. And Brian's very, very happy with what he's done. Um, and I think there are plenty of people out there that you know probably underpins a very large portion of the discretionary spending in the ACT. Um, I just think people need to be aware of the real value because it kills me inside when people walk in and have been not making the most of this fund. Um, so I, I thought it was quite topical because people might be at home, working from home, having a listen, you know, maybe you're not driving home and you miss the show in other weeks. 
But it's it's something people need to keep in mind because obviously an index pension twice a year. Now, let's let's put a caveat around this. There are times where it may not be applicable. Yeah. Okay? If you're a single person and you want to have control over your assets, then taking a full pension may not be an option. And I stress that people consider their pension options that are right for them, not what you know, Shelley and Brian and, and Johnny and Michael and the ladies around the water cooler have done because everybody's financial situation is different and there are pros and cons of all options. Um, I'm not saying that a full pension is the best way to go. I'm saying the contribution here is the greatest way to maximise your choice and your flexibility, how you choose to take it. Um, just remember that you can take 50%, 100% or anywhere in between. And the fund does a very poor job of explaining that to people when they're getting their exit statements. Um, so just keep in mind that if a 70% pension works for you or an 80% pension works for your husband or a 92% pension works for someone else, you know, then consider those options and don't discount the fact that they are available, yeah. even though they're not explained really well when you get your exit paperwork and you're considering okay. your options. So obviously people who are still working in the public service and have been there for a while, so they're covered by this scheme, which yep. is no longer applicable for new employees, yep. but if you've been there long enough to be a member of it, yep. you're still working there now, yep. the time to make these decisions is now, not when you're ready to retire. Correct, yeah, and that's it. I think you know people might be salary sacrificing, thinking they're doing the right thing, and not making a 10% contribution. I'd suggest they think about their numbers and look at the, the end game, or start with the end in mind, as they say because um, it could be advantageous for them, as we saw in the example earlier. Um, this is also part of a broader strategy where you may want to make personal contributions to super. In other shows, we've spoken about making contributions around this time of year and then claiming 100% of it as a tax deduction. You can do that as well as make a 10% contribution if you have the cash flow, or look at the family unit and say, well, if I can maximise here, you can do this part. So you need to look at things with a collective lens um, and make sure that obviously you're accumulating in the most efficient manner, because obviously, Everybody wants to make their money work as hard as they possibly can. Um, but think about what you're going to do. Think about your pension options when you finish. Think about how you can accumulate now, not just in later years, because obviously this fund has a, an accumulative effect, which you obviously can't catch up by making additional payments. Um, so they're all things that people should keep in mind when they start a new financial year from you know nearly next month um, and, and, and go into something fully informed. Because on, on a big final average salary, this, th these numbers can get pretty funky. Indeed they can. So where do people get more information? Yeah, so look, if, if, if you're unsure, if you want to consider this as part of a, a broader strategy, obviously 62604749, the girls will be back in the office from next week and um, we'll be having meetings in the office, although we're still doing the Zoom for those that love it and want to keep it going. Um, obviously envisionfinancial.com.au, you uh, you've got the, the knowledge centre there where you've got the resource tab we can use. We've got the podcast, obviously the strategy stutter. Luke talks money on uh, on Spotify and on iTunes to catch up on the show. And obviously we've got the YouTube channel where we pause and then we um, we add some some key takeouts to the screen. So you can subscribe to that and make sure you don't miss anything on that front. Indeed, Luke, thanks very much. And we'll catch you again next Friday. See you next Friday. Luke Smith from Envision Financial with uh, all of the important information you need to know about your money. It's three minutes before...